I've now um, taken off the uh, previous tool post with the retracting tool holder so I'm back to the standard tool holder in here uh, and an ordinary facing tool. This is um, stainless steel and what I'll do is I'll just turn a little bit of this down so you can see uh, that it can cope with turning it um, and I'll just move around here and down here is the dial gauge which will measure as um, the tool moves so I can measure exactly how much the tool is going to go in um, despite the fact it's only manual so let's give that a go I'll just go down and touch off I'll make the first depth of cut 0.2 of a millimeter and I'm going to cut it um, I'll do it 12 millimeters long. Now I'll make the cut at point 0.3 
depth of cut and stainless steel. And that's running at 460 RPM. That's 0.5 depths of cut. If it can cut that, that's pretty good. Now I can show uh, going down the lathe bed Let's take this off for the moment So it's quite quick certainly adequate enough. There, I've shown you uh, cutting 0.5 depth of cut, that's half a millimetre depth of cut in stainless steel uh, running at 540-550 rpm which for a tiny lathe like this that is pretty good. Um, if it's too slow it'll bog down uh, but at that speed it's fine. So that you can see uh, how the dial works I've got this set so that it's at 14 millimeters in uh, the cut position and if I move it back you can see the dial unwinding till it gets to zero at that point. So there is an easy way of just quickly me measuring a depth of cut, uh, sorry, a, a, a length of cut. Um, so that's as far as I've got with it now. Um, I've still got to put on the uh, measurement of the way in which um, the head goes down. That's pretty close now to being a, a useful running lathe. I'll perhaps do another video when I've got a bit more used to it in a few days. I've opened up the cover at the back now just so that you can see inside how I've managed to fit everything in. Um, this is the main spindle here and the belt that um, runs the motor to drive the spindle is to this motor at the back uh, which is the same as the one I showed you up on the top there 24 volt um, 500 watt motor 
um, and they're really quite reasonably powerful um, and um, you can feel it when you try and uh, hold the chuck or whatever to, that there's quite a bit of torque especially at low speed um, and then this is the encoder which is a standard industry encoder um, and it operates via a tooth belt which is slightly hidden at the back here um, which runs down there um, and <clears throat> that sends a signal to synchronize the speed of the spindle here uh, with the amount of uh, the stepper motor drive going down the lathe. Um, <clears throat> tucked away just here is the um, controls for the manual side of the lathe. Uh, this is the board um, that uh, is contained behind the back inside here is one of these little boards um, and they're a very cheap um, stepper motor controller uh, which gives you manual control there's an on off switch on that side and a switch that changes direction on that side and a variable speed on the potentiometer <clears throat> and what I did was I took out the controls from here uh, with extension wires that feed these manual switches here which uh, makes it slightly easier to control and um, I can easily replace the switches if they ever need doing <coughs> so that's that board uh, this board is the board that I use to control uh, the z-axis um, of the mill uh, and it has um, a counter here that shows how uh, what the pulse width is in the range of 0 to 1000 um, and there's a potentiometer co control there and it also has an on off switch on it um, and that's up and down or reversing it in my uh, up and down in my case um, with a, a middle position that's off. Uh, so what I've done is I've used that board up here mounted inside that box. The z-axis motor as I mentioned is controlled by the box in there which has um, a pulse width modulation um, control. It's supplied with 24 volts from one of the transformers and this is the cable that goes up to the motor itself and as I mentioned before there's a gearbox inside here which means that it's got very good control over the sp speed. It's quick enough um, and also it's able to control quite modest speeds so if I turn this on you can see it's just t barely turning over so you can do it very very controlled way uh, this is a, a two millimeter pitch screw on the z-axis and um, what I intend to do which I haven't done yet is I'm going to fit this somewhere so that I can read off accurately what the head's doing when it when it's raised or lowered <clears throat> um, and that means then I don't need to use any of the manual control over this quill at all uh, which is the same as I've got on uh, my CNC mill so as uh, you can see that goes in one direction fine and going back up again it's quick enough with that with being able to give me really quite good control over the speed on the descent so I'm well pleased with that that works very well um, <clears throat> and certainly gets away from 
having to do rapid, rapid turns for quite a long time of the handle at the top, which is very inconvenient. This is the um, PulseWids modulator controller board that uh, controls this. I've got a slightly different board in there at the moment, but I'll probably use this one again. Um, I'm using it currently um, on the headstock, and um, the only slight drawback is, um, as it's originally provided with just a on-off switch combined with a potentiometer which actually isn't too much of a problem because you can take the leads for the on-off switch out um, and control that separately if you want to um, <coughs> so provide a push button on-off uh, if there's room um, and uh, this is a very cheap solution to controlling the speed of the um, DC motor um, and this is certainly powerful enough to be able to cope without getting hot and uh, works perfectly well. They're so cheap they're under ten, ten pounds uh, best to buy uh, at least one as a spare and the same goes for the one on the z-axis as well um, and I've also got a spare for the um, uh, x-axis stepper motor controller so that's the, what's inside here or will be inside here um, and what's currently up above here inside here there's just enough room and no more a little bit more room down here 